getting started very soon, so this is your two-minute warning. Come on in and grab your seat. Good morning, everyone. Oh, come on. Good morning, everyone. I know it's early, and listen, there's a lot of baseball people here, and it's really early for us, all right? So shake off the cobwebs. We're getting ready to go. Welcome to the 2022 Run to Home Base, presented by Raytheon Technologies. Grab your seat if you haven't already. We are ready to get rolling. Today's event, as you know, raises funds for home base, the Red Sox Foundation, and Massachusetts General Hospital Program. It heals the invisible wounds of war for veterans of all eras, service members, their families, and families of the fallen. This is the 13th consecutive year we are here doing this. I'm Tom Karen from the New England Sports Network, Nesson. So proud to play a small part in this. Uh, it was a late night last night, but that's all right. And last year, how many of you were here last year? When we started coming back, getting closer to normal, that was in late September, right? September 25th. And after that weekend last year, the Red Sox won four of their last six games, beat the Yankees here at Fenway Park, beat the Tampa Bay Rays, and came within two wins of the World Series. So it's all because of the energy you brought to Fenway. No pressure. The incredible work being done by the home base program is what you'll be hearing about over the next few minutes. World-class clinical care, wellness, education, and research, and most importantly, it all comes at no cost to the veterans and the families we serve. We begin as we always begin a night here at Fenway Park. We ask you to rise and remain standing for the presentation of the colors by the Massachusetts Joint Color Guard, representing all branches of the armed services and the national anthem by Boston singer and songwriter, Amandi Music. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare. The bombs bursting in air gave proof to the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the 
absolutely beautiful. That's how you get it started. We have more than 1,800 runners and walkers taking place here in person and virtually around the world. Give yourselves a hand for getting up early this morning <laughs> and getting ready to run. Homebase is so grateful to have the support of several individuals from the government, military, and business community. From the stage here today, I would like to recognize Tom Warner, chairman of the Boston Red Sox and the Red Sox Foundation. <laughs> Dr. David F. M. Brown, president of Massachusetts General Hospital. <laughs> General Gary Brito, deputy chief of staff, G1 U.S. Army. <laughs> General Jack Hammond, executive director, home base. Rebecca Splain Salwasser, Boston Red Sox Executive Vice President, Social Impact and Red Sox Foundation Executive Director. <laughs> Dr. Greg Meyer, President of the Community Division and Executive Vice President of Value-Based Care for Mass General Brigham. Tom LaLiberty, President, Land Warfare and Air Defense for Raytheon Missiles and Defense, a business of Raytheon Technologies. <laughs> Jennifer Silva, Chief Program Officer, Wounded Warrior Project. <laughs> Sergeant First Class, Julian Kitching. Major General Gary W. Keefe, Adjutant General, Massachusetts National Guard. <laughs> Rear Admiral John W. Mauger, First District Commander, U.S. Coast Guard. <laughs> and from WCVB Channel 5, Katie Thompson, who will be your voice as you run. That happy voice you hear when you get back here and cross home plate. Also with us today, Major General, General Retired Joseph Carter, former Adjutant General, Massachusetts National Guard. Major General Retired Pete Aylward, Senior Advisor, the United States of America, Vietnam War Commemoration. Brigham General Virginia I. Gaglio, Chief of Staff and Air Component Commander, Massachusetts Air National Guard. Secretary Cheryl Poppy, Massachusetts State Department of Veterans Services. Congressional Medal of Honor recipient, Staff Sergeant Ryan Pitts, Home Base Honorary Board. <laughs> Congressman Joe Kennedy III, who has supported this run going all the way back to the first year in 2010. And Lieutenant Colonel Brian Kitching. But most importantly, we have former patients, success stories from Home Base here with us today. Men and women who bravely served our country and came home only to continue the battle, their fight against invisible wounds. To those men and women, we start by saying thank you for your service. <laughs> by being here at Fenway Park today, we are doing more than saying thanks. By participating in today's event, you are raising critical funds for the home base program. You're having a direct impact on the lives of our veterans, service members, and their families. Home bases services are needed now more than ever. Military suicides are up some 20% since the onset of the pandemic, and as you know, we're not out of it yet. This past year's challenges have resulted in a flood of veterans seeking care and service at home base. Today, Thanks to your participation and your incredible efforts, we are able to help these heroes by donating and raising money. The premier clinical care and support these heroes receive at home base allow them to reclaim their lives. This is more than just a run. This is about saving lives. The home base program was created when the World Series champion, I still like saying that, doesn't that sound nice? When the World Series champion Boston Red Sox visited Walter Reed Medical Center in after the 2004 and 2007 season, Red Sox chairman Tom Warner talked to more and more of our heroes and learned that so many of them were fighting the invisible wounds and not getting the care they needed and they deserved. He realized right then that these heroes need our help and our support. And since then, more than 30 
8,000 veterans and family members have been served since the creation of the home base program in 2009. So please welcome to the stage, the chairman of the Boston Red Sox, Tom Warner. Thank you, Tom. That was a lot better than when I came into Fenway Park last night and some fan said, Warner, you suck. So uh, <laughs> on behalf of, of the Red Sox, it is my pleasure today to welcome all of you to come to Fenway Park. And every year when I come back and I see all of you signing up to run, it, 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 really, it, it really moves me. I know how important this program is, and I know you know how important it is. So I want to thank every one of you for coming here today. Many of you I know are diehard Red Sox fans, so I just do want to say before starting that I'm also disappointed by our play in recent weeks. So it gives me great pleasure to say that many more people today will be crossing home plate than we've had in quite <laughs> some time. <laughs> anyway, to get serious, you all are writing checks and spreading the word to support the life-saving work at home base. Many of you for the first time, but many of you have been here from the very beginning. And there's a small group that I want to take a moment to acknowledge. These are dedicated, devoted people who have shown up every single year for 13 years to run to home base. You promote, you sponsor, you encourage your friends and colleagues to fundraise, and you sign up every year. And I know you do that because you believe what I believe, that the sacrifice of our veterans and families cannot go unnoticed, and then you are there when they need it most. So to Cindy Brown and the Boston Duck Tours, please stand up. <laughs> to the Heinz family who honor their fallen son and brother Derek, you're here, please stand up. And to Jeff Rushton of Daymark Solutions, thank you, each one of you. You've been here from the very beginning, and you are our Hall of Fame. <laughs> As Tom just said, this past year has continued to be a challenging year for our home base community. The withdrawal from Afghanistan and the ongoing war in the Ukraine have added to the stress our military and veterans communities are grappling with amidst a pandemic, a faltering economy, and 20 years of war. Many of you brave men and women served on the front lines protecting us from the world's dangers and kept our country safe while our families waited and worried at home. <coughs> and when you do come home, home base has been there for you and we will continue to be there for you each day, providing life-saving care to our veterans and their families so that they can heal to pursue the life they so richly deserve. <coughs> the invisible wounds of war have had a devastating effect. Over 30,000 veterans of Afghanistan and Iraq have died by suicide. This is four times the number of Americans killed in action in both wars. Over 20 suicides a day of men and women who have already sacrificed so much for us and our country. And it is one thing to think of an idea, but I've seen the results of home base, and I know the accolades our center has received are well-deserved. This program saves lives and returns veterans and their families back to normalcy. Today I want to share the story of a friend, Lieutenant Colonel Brian Kitching, an amazing man who we are honored to have with us here today. Lieutenant Kitching is a U.S. Army Ranger actively serving, and he currently commands the 2nd Battalion, 327th Infantry Regiment in the U.S. Army's famed 101st Airborne Division at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Colonel Kitching came to home base after a very challenging fifth combat deployment. In October 2012, Brian was a captain in command of an infantry compa company in Afghanistan. On October 4th, 
Brian and members of his unit were inserted by helicopter into a particularly dangerous area in the Kandahar province to conduct a joint Afghan-American assault on an insurgent stronghold. As the patrol moved through a dense field, Brian and his soldiers began taking intense fire from a large group of enemy fighters. And after several engagements with the enemy, several of his soldiers were wounded by gunshot and grenade sh shrapnel. And it seemed to Brian that his patrol was trapped in a village surrounded by IEDs. Realizing he must get his unit out of the village and evacuate his wounded or they would die, Captain Kitching made the decision to lead them to safety. He risked his life by sprinting over a, tha over a hundred meters of open field through enemy fire and explosive devices while under direct attack, during which a group of improvised bombs were detonated. Brian then set up security for his advancing forces, which enabled them to survive this terrible day. Captain Kitching earned the Silver Star Medal on this day for his extraordinary heroism. His unit suffered casualties, but he saved countless lives. When Brian returned home, he grappled with the thought that he should have been one of those who were killed instead of any of his fellow soldiers. He had survivor's guilt. But Brian knew he needed help, and he replayed his decisions over and over again, feeling as the senior commander, if any life was lost, it should have been his. He told me he became hypervigilant to anything that might be a threat to him and his family. He couldn't go to the park or have dinner with his family without feeling that they were all in grave danger. And as a consummate leader, Brian understood that those who do not seek help are a risk to themselves and their team. So he took the brave step to get help and come to home base. Brian has described his home base experience as life changing for both him and his family. And as a highly decorated army ranger and now ambassador to home base, Brian has not only encouraged his brothers and sisters to go to home base to get care, he convinced his actual brother, Julian, who's sitting behind me, who's a decorated US Army Green Beret, to come home to home base too for the care he needed. We'll hear from Julian in a moment, but today I'd like all of us to thank Brian for his service and his sacrifice to his country, and I'd like Brian to please step forward so that we can recognize him. I'd like to end by tr asking you to turn your attention to the big screen for a special message from Governor Charlie Baker. Good morning, everybody. This is Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker. And due to some scheduling issues, I'm not able to join you all at Fenway Park this year, which really bums me out since it's my last run to home base as governor. But I just want everybody to know that this event remains enormously important to our entire administration and especially to me, because I've witnessed firsthand what the work that's done at home base means to many of our veterans and their families here in the Commonwealth. Sadly, military suicides are up as much as 20% in the COVID era, a deep reflection of the mental health crisis that COVID-19 has exacerbated on so many communities nationally. As a result, this event in particular is more important than ever before, which is part of the reason why I wanted to have a chance to say a few words, even if I couldn't be there. The funds that are raised support an organization that is proven 
to be successful in helping vets and their families deal with the very significant and severe issues and sometimes life-threatening issues that come with those invisible wounds. This organization provides critical services. They do a fabulous job. They serve a population that has earned by far as much of our help as we can possibly supply. And I really do appreciate your participation in this really important work today. I hope you all have a great time with the race. I hope you all finish in a time that exceeds your expectations. I really hope that the two Toms, Tom Karen and Tom Werner, do a great job of delivering on their messages because they've done a terrific job both hosting and driving this event for the better part of the last eight years. And I do want to say once again, on behalf of our Commonwealth, on behalf of all of our amazing vets and their families, thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting this really special organization. You heard what Governor Baker said, he said it right, it works. That is the beauty of this program. You can firsthand <clears throat> see the results of the money you are raising, going to the services, saving the lives of the men and women being treated at home base program. I also want to point out to Tom the, the incredible team behind. A, a round of applause for the group, for the Red Sox Foundation, the Red Sox who put this event together. As you can imagine, getting this many people in here in the morning, and as Tom said, getting that many people to home plate. Yeah, I don't know if it was the plan. You had the Toronto Blue Jays do a test run 28 times they crossed home plate a couple Fridays ago. Uh, but I think we're ready for more of you, 1,800 of you. I like the sound of that. To continue the ceremony, I'd like to welcome and introduce Dr. David F.M. Brown, president of Massachusetts General Hospital. Without their support, without their clinical care, this would not work. Good morning, everyone. I want to also extend my welcome to all of our guests, my distinguished colleagues behind me, our veterans, families, and runners. Uh, it's a wonderful partnership between Mass General Hospital and the Red Sox Foundation that created Home Base and continues to support Home Base. And I just want to add my own thanks to Tom Werner, sitting right, literally right behind me, so I can't see him for his uh, leadership, support, and continued advocacy. Um, my, this is my first home base as MGH, run to home base as MGH president, and this is my first year helping to support and lead the home base foundation. And it is Tom who has really inspired me with his advocacy and his leadership, and he's really educated me too. So I just want to acknowledge and thank you for that. As a healthcare leader, of course, it's not lost on me that this has been an incredibly challenging year, an incredibly challenging several years, and even more so for our veterans and their families. As my colleagues have noticed, and as I've uh, been educated and horrified to learn, the suicide rate among veterans is much higher than that of the general population and has increased during the pandemic. There are more than 20 suicides a day of our veterans, almost one for each hour of each day. And I think this is really the, the fundamental reason why Mass General got behind this effort from the beginning. And we remain strongly committed to home base and all its work, and we will be there alongside the Red Sox into the future without fail. We will continue to fulfill our promise to help home base offer world-class direct clinical care, wellness, education and research, all at no cost, regardless of era of service, discharge service, di discharge status or geographic location. We will continue to help heal the invisible wounds of war so veterans, service members and families can get their lives back. We will do that by harnessing the country's best clinicians to deliver innovative treatments to our patients. It has been said the nation which forgets its defenders will itself be forgotten. Well, Massachusetts General Hospital, the Red Sox Foundation, Home Base, and all of us here today have come together to ensure that doesn't happen. That is our promise to all of you. Mass General Hospital will continue to be there for Home Base and those who serve and those we serve for as long as they need us. As the motto says, 
their mission is complete. Ours is just beginning. I wish you all luck as you race today, cross home plate, and thank you for con your continued support of our program. Dr. Brown, thank you. <clears throat> this is the uh, today's event, and, and this race each year is the single most important fundraising event of the home base program. Over $26 million raised and servicing more than 30,000 men and women, families uh, through this program. Most importantly, 100% of every dollar you are raising today will go to the life saving care provided by home base program. And to continue now, I want to introduce Dr. Greg Meyer, the president of the Community Division and Executive Vice President of Value Based Care for the Mass General Brigham. Greg is also a retired Medical Corps officer and colonel in the United States Air Force. He was called up as part of Operation Iraqi Freedom, so no one better to talk about what we are doing today. Please welcome. Good morning, and thank you. Thank you to our supporters here today. Thank you to our runners. Thank you to those who join me on the stage. And a special thank you to all of my fellow veterans. As Tom noted, I'm Greg Meyer. I'm a primary care doctor and general internist in the Mass General Brigham system. But most importantly for today, I'm a proud Air Force veteran. I have had the privilege, <laughs> I have had the privilege of being part of the home base program since its inception. And my wife, Bonnie, and I are strong supporters of home base. Let me tell you why. First and foremost, sadly, through my continued work with military health system and veterans affairs, I get to see the toll of invisible wounds of war. I also, though, understand the incredible strength of our healthcare system, Mass General Brigham its clinical expertise that allow us to address the most complex and challenging needs of those we serve. And there are none more important than our veterans who serve through us. We have the capabilities of harnessing the strength of that incredible healthcare system, paired with the Red Sox Foundation, leveraging the expertise in parts of our system, such as the Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital, led by my friend and colleague, Dr. Ross Rafan. We remain at Mass General Brigham committed to home base. We recognize that although for some two decades of war is over, for many the battles are just beginning. We are here for the long haul with you. Finally, the most important reason why my wife and I support home base is because I've had the opportunity to see what it can do for individuals, the difference it can make for some of you that are with us here today, and for many, many more who didn't have the opportunity to join us. When I began my work at Mass General, now over three decades ago, one of my mentors said, before they care what you know, they want to know you care. And I assure you that there is no stronger commitment to showing that we care about all of you than Mass General Brigham and Red Sox Foundation pairing up and creating the home base program. Thank you all, have a great run. Thank you, Dr. Meyer. What started as a great program uh, and served so many servicemen and women and uh, veterans here in our area has now become a national and international success. Uh, we have had servicemen and women and, and veterans from all 50 states and, and 13 other countries uh, be treated through the work at the home base programs, through the money you are raising today. I ask you to turn your attention up to the big screens for a special message from our First Lady, Dr. Jill Biden. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Fenway Park. Thank you for getting up early, lacing up your sneakers, and coming out to support our veterans, service members, their families, caregivers, and survivors. I've seen the important work of home base firsthand, and I'm so glad that we're all joining forces to ensure our military families have what they need to thrive, because all of us have a part to play. 
So thank you. And from one runner to another, best of luck as you make your way to home base. Wish I had that much energy before I ran. Uh, we would like to welcome more than 300 Raytheon Technologies employees today. Runners, walkers, volunteers here at Fenway. Many more participating virtually as well. They represent thousands more who have made it their mission to advance the work of home base and the care it provides to our veterans and their families. Please welcome up to the podium Tom LaLiberty. He's president of Land Warfare and Air Defense at Raytheon Missiles and Defense, a business of Raytheon Technologies. Please tell us more about that mission, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Runners, walkers, volunteers, supporters, and families, I'm excited to join you in kicking off this special event and welcoming everyone to Fenway Park this morning. It is my privilege to speak to you on behalf of Raytheon Technologies and to support the important work of home base in their mission to deliver life-saving resources to veterans and their families. As an aerospace and defense company, we have a unique and profound responsibility to provide military and allies with the most technologically advanced capabilities, to give our service members an advantage on the battlefield so they can return home safely to their families and friends. Our commitment to their safety and well-being does not stop there. That's why we are proud partners of Home Base, because we believe in their mission to help our veterans heal from the invisible wounds of war when they return. Today, we are here to show our heroes that they can count on us on and off the battlefield. Today, You'll hear more about the escalating need for the world-class clinical care that only home base provides. We are enormously grateful to play a part in helping home base respond to that need. Thanks to all of you for being here today, for supporting those who have bravely served and have the courage to ask for help. And to our servicemen, members, veterans, and their loved ones, we are grateful for the sacrifices you make every day for our citizens, our country, and our allies. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. We'll keep it rolling. I want to introduce one of Home Base's strongest partners and leaders in the provision of life-saving care for our veterans and their families. Jen Silva is the Chief Program Officer for the Wounded Warrior Project, an Army veteran and West Point graduate, and one of the strongest voices for veterans in our country. such an honor to be here today and to celebrate this important event um, and we are so proud of our partnership with home base and uh, up front I want to thank the home base leaders General Jack Hammond Michael Allard and your entire team for the life-changing work that goes on here at home base at Wounded Warrior Project our mission to honor and empower wounded warriors is one of great responsibility and deeply embedded in that mission is um, tackling mental health issues and also suicide prevention. Our nation's heroes, the brave men and win women who volunteered to serve on behalf of all of us, uh, need us now more than ever, as everybody has said. Um, we need a full network of support for veterans. Uh, there's no wrong door into care. Um, and, and I wanna make sure we also thank our other Warrior Care Network partners. There's three other partners in our Warrior Care Network and we're really excited to be here with them today as well. And since its inception in 2015, the Warrior Care Network have served uh, close to 7,000 service members and their families uh, through life-changing care. They get a year's worth of therapy in two weeks, and the results from that ultimately help them thrive. So really, I think it's a story of hope. And I just wanna uh, just really say your generosity makes this happen. And, and through this, our entire network of support for veterans ultimately can help them thrive. So we're just really grateful to be here today. Thank you. Jen, thank you so much. And thank you for the work you continue to do. Uh, you know, this is Fenway Park. I always feel we have to make it feel a little bit like a baseball game. So how about a seventh inning stretch? Everybody get up. Let's move a little bit here, all right? Come on, give me a little of that, a little of this. There we go. 
All right, now sit back down and tighten up again. Wait till we get after the next speaker. Tom's going to sing Sweet Caroline to make it feel like the eighth inning. No? No. I could feel the stare on the back of my uh, neck on that one. Uh, I'd like to introduce a man who really no, needs no introduction uh, on a moment like this. Uh, the man who keeps the ship running, the executive director of Home Base, retired Brigadier General Jack Hammond. Morning, everyone. You know, this is a very special day for us because we're all back. It is fantastic looking out and seeing so many wonderful faces, friends, families, battle buddies from different deployments. Um, I just want to go back a step and just thank Tom again for the, for the vision he has and the continued support to stay with us now. Um, he's helped drive this program and keep it moving forward for 13 years. Pretty remarkable. And his support just doesn't end here. I mean, I, g I get calls from him at 11 o'clock at night talking about stuff about what's going on here because he has such a passionate drive to care for our veterans that began probably a lot sooner than um, when he first got involved with home base. His dad's a decorated veteran, World War II. Um, but a as he visited World War uh, he, uh, Walter Reed Army Medical Center and saw the catastrophically injured young men and women there, it drove him to action. Uh, and so I really appreciate all that you do and continue to do, Tom. I also want to thank my battle buddy, Becca Salwasser and the Red Sox Foundation for everything they do, along with Mike Gallard and the home base team. Uh, those folks were up at 3 in the morning, I mean here at 3 in the morning, getting things ready, so they had a really early start. Um, so we appreciate everything you guys are all doing to make this beautiful day happen. Um, we've got some very special people that have joined us here today, and I'd like you all to just join me a minute and recognize the Gold Star and Families of the Fallen uh, family members that are here with us today. Uh, and we'd like to honor you and thank you for the sacrifices you've made to this country. to thank Secretary Poppy representing the governor, Sep uh, Secretary Santiago for representing the mayor today, uh, my good friend Maurizio Fava, uh, the chief of psychiatry, and all the clinical professionals and staff from MGH and the Red Sox who are running. I know we've got nine Red Sox wives joining us as well, so thank you as well for coming and joining us today. And then finally, I'd like to say th thank all our veterans, generals, colonels, admirals. We've got it all today. And that just shows you our grateful nation of supporters. Uh, coming together through all the world's turbulences, we are coming together for this day just to support each other, support our veterans, and support our families. So it's a very, very special day. Uh, last night, I was on Nesson with Tom, and he asked me the million dollar question, because every year you try and think, what am I gonna talk about after 13 years? I don't wanna be too boring. Um, but Tom asked me a great question. He said, why is it so important uh, to focus on these wounds, especially today. And I explained to him that after 20 years of war, three million men and women deploying to dangerous places, we're left with 1.8 million men and women with permanent dis disabilities from these war, and, and a, a large percentages ha percentage of these have to do with the invisible wounds of war. Um, we've seen far too many people die by suicide. Um, 114,000 veterans have died by suicide since September 11, 2001. 30,000 of those are from the post-9-11 generation. That is just a stunning, stunning reality. And for those of us who served, um, we all know far too many people who have died by suicide. It's no other industry can say, you know, four or five guys I worked with have all died by suicide. Uh, for many of us, um, who have served with me, we lost a very close friend several weeks ago uh, that just tore us all apart and, and really reminded us how important this work is. As we look at it, um, more than a trillion dollars has been invested by the government to try and solve this problem, but this is not something the government can solve alone. Um, frankly, they're failing at the task, and I, I shared that belief with them uh, in front of Congress last fall. They just aren't getting it done. If you keep trying to do the same thing over and over, and expect a different result, 
We all know that's the definition of insanity, and that's the way they've approached this. Beginning back in 2009 with the inspiration from Tom to take this program on, we've been able to leverage the incredible resources of the private sector from Mass General, Harvard, Mass General Brigham System, Spalding Rehab, folks like Dr. Ross Safant, to find new and improved ways to care for these invisible wounds, find new models of care um, with exceptional results. And, and so it's when we bring our collective intelligence together, we bring, bring our collective power together, that's how we solve big things. And that's what we're doing here. And each one of you are part of that. Because we know that a vision without resources is a hallucination. You guys help pri provide the resources so that we can innovate and develop new and creative solutions and save lives. And since the inception of Home Base, we've been able to care and support for more than 30,000 people, all at no cost, because people like you lacing up your sneakers, coming out in early in the morning, and doing your best to support the work we do. And it's also through a series of collective partnerships, because nobody can do it alone. And again, that, that's a failing of the VA. They need to get over it. They need to get over their ego. They need to partner with programs like ours, um, just like we partner with the Wounded Warrior Project, Raytheon. We partner with UCLA, Emory, Rush, um, these other great clinical partners. Any, anybody that's willing to help veterans, we work with them because this collective effort can reach the largest number of people and have the greatest success. So in closing, I want to thank you for being part of a grateful nation of supporters that help drive the success that are saving lives every day. So thank you all. Thank you, General Hammond. How many of you are running today? Let's hear it. How many of you have serious, competitive, elite runners? Yeah, not as many. <laughs> See, here's what I'm thinking, all right? Why run? I know a great little cafe right around the corner. We talk for a few minutes. You already got the money. We'll go have a bagel. Not helping. Not helping? Sorry. All right, we'll run. Yes, sir. Uh, continuing, Lieutenant uh, General Gary Brito, a native of Hyannis, Massachusetts, a proud New Englander, commissioned as an infantry officer through Penn State University, entered active duty in March 1987. Lieutenant Brito has served in a variety of command and staff assignments throughout his career and has deployed to both Iraq and Afghanistan. He currently serves as the U.S. Army's 49th Deputy Chief of Staff, G1. Please welcome to the podium, Lieutenant General Gary Brito. Sir, thank you. Hey, good morning, everybody, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to just talk to you from the heart today. I don't have any prepared re remarks on purpose. I wish you could see what I see from this perch. A lot of energy, a lot of motivation, a lot of enthusiasm, and more importantly, a lot of support for a very important cause. Those serving today in uniform, of which I'm proud to do so, and the veterans who have served. I want to go off script for like five seconds and have you give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> hey, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to take just a moment to speak of a veteran that I had the honor of serving with a few years back. And this soldier will be recognized later today with a proper tribute during the game. And his name is Sergeant First Class Alwyn Cash. I had the honor of serving with Sergeant First Class Alwyn Cash in Iraq 2003 and 2005. On the 17th of October, because of his great leadership, 17 October 2005, Sergeant First Class Alwyn Cash was commanding a lead Bradley fighting vehicle and a platoon that was uh, taken off from our FOB to conduct a mission. That night was particularly dark outside, no moon, but yet he continued to persevere in the leadership that he exemplified so, exemplified so well for the soldiers of which he served with, and I was one of them, had an honor to serve with him. Uh, in, the old, in the dark hours of that evening, his vehicle struck an improvised explosive device, and many of you are well aware of what that happens, what, what can cause that at that time. Sergeant First Class Cash's vehicle exploded. Essentially, the fuel tank caught on fire. And because of his bravery and his selfless service, although on fire himself, Sergeant First Class Cash exited the vehicle and went to the back of the vehicle and I'll spare some of the details, but proceeded to save those soldiers of which he loved so very much. Again, 
despite having received over bur burns over 70% of his body and the horrific pain, Floating First Class Cash pulled his soldiers out of vehicles and got them all to a point of safety where they were later on evacuated. To fast forward a little bit, although he did eventually succumb to his wounds, he ensured that his boys were okay. And his last statement was just that, I want to make sure my boys are okay. And starting first class cash, in my mind, exemplified all that soldiers, all that great Americans stand for and continue to love his soldiers to the very end. He is represented here today by his loving sister, Kazanel, and I would like to take just a moment to recognize her before I, uh, before I add some more tribute to Sergeant First Class Cash. Cash, you know, would you please stand and raise your hand? <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And here's why I recognize that great family. Not too long after that incident, it's been about 12 years, I began a journey along with the support of Sergeant um, Cazanella and others to give Sergeant First Class Cash the proper recognition he deserved. And it, was, it is with great enthusiasm, pride, and honor that I am happy to say that the President of the United States awarded the Medal of Honor to Sergeant First Class Cash on the 16th of December, 2021. And that was a moment not only of personal pride, but more importantly for his family, for the soldiers that he loved and served with and led so well, and for the future soldiers that will serve also. So to the organizations represented in the audience and those behind me today, and most importantly for those that are running physically and virtually, I thank you and we thank you for your continuous support for all the soldiers and military members serving now, that have served, and that will serve in the future. God bless you all. Have a safe run, and thank you. Thank you, General Brito. I'd like to bring General Jack Hammond back up on the stage for a special presentation. So I, w one of my favorite parts of the run is introducing um, some remarkable people. And over the years, it, it, it's just been incredible. And this is no exception. Um, a moment ago, you heard the story about Lieutenant Colonel Brian Kitching, and it's pretty remarkable. Um, we're all impressed with it. He's an amazing guy. I got to meet him a few years ago. Um, and then last year, I found out he had a brother, and he's no slouch. <laughs> Julian Kitching joined the Army in 2002, shortly after the attacks on 9-11, and that just kind of shows you the motivation and the spirit. He began his career as a young paratrooper, and after his first deployment to Iraq, he came home and decided to make a difference in his own life and the lives of others. He decided to become a U.S. Army Green Beret. Now that's not a light decision. If you've ever watched the movies, you've ever seen any of the stuff, that's only half of what goes on. And it's about a two-year process to become a Green Beret with full of rigor and pain. That's the only way I can describe it. He became an Army Green Beret and then immediately threw himself back into the service with three more quick deployments. And it was on his third deployment on April 23rd, 2011, he lost a very close friend down in Kandahar to an IED. And this really affected him deeply and set him on a course for us to meet at home base. And I'm not going to steal his thunder, and that's his story to tell. Uh, but I would tell you that um, on the anniversary of 9-11 last year, I went in to meet with a group of veterans that were coming through our two-week intensive clinical program, and that's where I met Julian for the first time. And he, he was, he's, w as soon as you meet him, he's just an incredibly likable guy. And then I learned more about his story, and then I learned that he had a brother <laughs> who I knew. And so this is truly a family affair. When you think about it, not only two brothers serving in the war together, but both in special op serving in the special operations community, one as an Army Ranger, one is a Green Beret, both decorated heroes. Um, both have got their care from home base, and both have become huge advocates trying to share their story to help their brothers and sisters in arms get the care they need. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce to the stage 
a decorated Green Beret and a great guy, Julian Kitchen. Thanks, everybody. Distinguished guests, uh, home base team members, uh, race support staff and runners, I want to welcome you all uh, to the Run to Home Base. On behalf of veterans, service members, and family members, I want to thank you for your support and engagement on this important issue. It warms my heart uh, to see <laughs> so many people come out to run this early, and I'm, I just need to admit that since leaving the Army, uh, I have not had the occasion to routinely see anybody this early in the morning. <laughs> And, and doing so without proper caffeine intake only makes this morning all the more noteworthy for me. <laughs> uh, again, my name is Julian Kitching, and I served most of my Army career in our Special Operations Forces. I served at the 3rd Special Forces Group as a Communications, uh, Intelligence, and Operations Sergeant. I served as a Senior Instructor at the U.S. Army John F. Uh, Kennedy Special Warfare Center and Schools, and then finished my uh, Army career working uh, in the in U.S. Intelligence community. On my last combat rotation to Afghanistan in 2011, as uh, General Hammond shared, uh, I lost my team sergeant, Master Sergeant Benjamin Bittner, in a place called Mushan in the Panjwe district of Kandahar province. Ben was an absolute legend in the 3rd Special Forces Group, and he was the heart and soul of our team. As the intelligence sergeant, um, I felt responsible in many ways for Ben's loss. I stepped into Ben's role and I led the team as a team sergeant for the remainder of that rotation. And when I got home, at first, uh, things were fine. But I began to struggle with substance abuse and post-traumatic stress disorder. I slowly began to disengage from my life. I began drinking alcohol to just stop feeling anything. I uh, stopped interacting with my family. I uh, lost sight of my, my purpose. I didn't want the responsibility of keeping people safe anymore. Right up to the end of my Army career, uh, though seeking mental health care, I just didn't feel like a feasible option, not just because of the stigma associated with seeking that care sometimes, but also because of real-world operational considerations that made seeking care very difficult. In 2017, um, I suc unsuccessfully attempted to end my own life as the shadows of anxiety and depression closed in around me. So I left the Army in 2019, and I, I landed relatively well. I found work at a large technology company, and from the outside looking in, things look great. You know, I have a nice house, I have nice cars, my kids are awesome and handsome, and you know, all these people down here, they're, they're good-looking people. <laughs> but, but on the inside, uh, you know, I, I was always afraid. Uh, you know, I couldn't sleep. Um, I was drinking just to make it through the day. And one day I overheard my wife and my oldest daughter, Nia, uh, talking, and she shared with her mother that she wanted her old dad back. She missed how engaged I was with the family, how I used to spend more time with them. And it was her desire, along with the unwavering support of my wife, that drove me to seek treatment at home base. I arrived here, as General Hammond shared, in Boston uh, on September 11th, 2021, exactly 20 years after the attacks that solidified my intent to join the military in the first place. I'm not sure what I expected, but what I received at home base was elite, life-saving, understanding and holistic care that gave me invaluable tools and skills to help me want to get up in the morning and fight for my life each day. I received the equivalent of over a year of therapy over the course of just 14 days of the intensive care program. I learned new thinking approaches and tools to help reduce my anxiety, and I got critical help uh, with my very real substance abuse issues. Home base also connected me with the Veterans Administration um, and made sure that I would have support when I arrived back at home. And one of the most powerful parts of the program was how they engaged with my wife, Kala. Kala is the strongest woman that I have ever met. I love you both. And, um, you know, the team at home base brought her into the healing process so she could learn and understand more about what I was going through and so that I could understand what she was experiencing as she was trying to hold our family together. 
it was hugely validating for her to be able to meet and interact with other family members who were supporting loved ones undergoing treatment. Today, my family and I are on the road to a place of healing and hope. No one's life is perfect, but I'm in a place where I want to live mine. Every day in this country, 22 veterans and service members decide that they don't want to keep fighting. Some of my brothers and sisters decide that waking up and living another day is just too much. This country needs home base, and we need you. We need to balance the equation. You remember from your early math classes, hopefully, that when you see an equation, no one <laughs> is nothing, no, he doesn't remember. <laughs> But you have an equation and you have to balance both sides of that. When we ask people to go somewhere and protect our interests globally, when we ask them to do hard things to keep us safe and keep things peaceful, we're automatically signing up as a nation to balance that equation in terms of providing the support that they need when they come back to us broken physically and mentally. We owe them. It's because of their sacrifices that our country is bound to them and we as citizens have a collective obligation and responsibility to care for those who have given us so much. As you run this morning, remember them and think about what you can do to help. Only you know all of the unique ways that you can have a positive impact in this space. Each of you has your own set of skills, networks of people and resources. Be bold with how you apply that in terms of how you think about how you can support. Good luck and have a great run this morning. Dale Presley Bear. society we use the word bravery a little too freely don't we that is bravery ladies and gentlemen thank you julian for having the courage to share your story with us today and for reminding us why we are all here today none of this would happen without you you are here raising the critical funds we need you are here making a difference in the lives of others we thank you all for participating thank you to all of our speakers for those of you who do not have the knees that can handle the next hour, I talked as long as I could and we're out of things to say, so it's time to run. You ready? All right, let's get going. The voice of your run today, we're going to turn the microphone over to Katie Thompson. You all know her, a traffic anchor and transportation specialist for New Center 5's top-rated eye-opener weekday newscast. She joined the station in 2017. Most important, a native of the great state of Maine like myself. Please welcome... To the podium, Katie Thompson. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Tom. Once again, we want to thank you for joining us for the 13th annual Run to Home Base opening ceremonies. As you enjoy today's event, we encourage you to take a moment to thank our veterans, service members, their families, and families of the fallen who are all joining us today for their service to our country. Run to home base participants, you will be exiting the ballpark in accordance to the color of your bib. It's very important that you only leave your seat when we call your bib color. Guests of runners and walkers today, you can watch the start of the race from the comfort of your seats here in the ballpark. All three waves will be broadcast on Fenway's high definition video board. Are we ready to go? All right, wave one and wave two, red and blue bib runners. We want you now to head to exit to gate A. Good luck, everybody. Follow directions from security and the volunteers. All other runners, hang tight right now. All 5K walkers with white bibs should remain seated at this time. We will call you to exit shortly. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Watching every morning. Oh, thanks for watching. You're up.
up early.